Hello and welcome to this week's Old School Q&A Livestream. I'm your host, Mod Gambit, and joining me on the couch this evening are Mod Bruno. Hey. Mod Ash. Hello. And on my left, I have Mod Kieran. You all right? And Mod G. Hi. So, start off with a couple of announcements, uh, sort of the usual thing. Um, yesterday, we posted, uh, actually, no, today, recently, uh, in the last hour, we posted a revised version of the Song of the Elves poll blog. Um, in response to your feedback, we've made some changes. Uh, I think mainly we removed the achievement diary because you guys weren't so keen on that. Um, and a couple of other things. So take a look, exclamation mark, SOTE or S-O-T-E. Uh, we'll take you straight to it if you want to have a look. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone say SOTE. <laughs> SOTE. That's the first time I've heard SOTE. Um, we also released a PvP blog on Monday. Um, we're going to talk more about that next week after there's been a chance for some feedback discussion um, and changes. I think Mod Rock in particular would like to come on and talk about some of the things that have uh, gone on there. Uh, and the next one is we also, on, at the same time, I think, well, roughly the same time um, on Monday, we published an Adventure Paths uh, blog where we discussed some changes we'd like to introduce for new players. Um, and I'm hoping, Kieran, you'll be able to clarify some of the uh, things that went on. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I haven't read uh, the questions in advance, uh, so I'm okay. like... <laughs> um, are you able to give a brief overview of, of the Advent blog? Yeah, Adventure Paths. Okay. So the, the, core, the core thing of Adventure Paths is to... It's basically a system that is there to try and help new players, right? That's the core of it. Players come out of the tutorial, are currently a large proportion of them quit. Especially the people who've not played the game before. And we're seeing a lot of new players come in due to mobile. Adventure Paths is there to try and give players some sort of direction. Now, we know old school, it's all about this steep learning curve. That's a core part of the game. There's a lot to explore, there's huge amounts of choice in what you can do. Adventure Paths aims to reduce that a little bit so that you have an understanding of what should I do to begin with. So that could be we add a path for combat, which say it has get five attack as a task. So it's not to be very specific, it's about giving a general direction. Right, let's go and train attack. And it will give you some assistance and guidance on how you might go and actually do that. Maybe it might tell you go and, t go and take on the goblins or the cows, for example, or might give you gen more general advice. And to help encourage players to use it, they get little unlocks along the way. Um, so to try and get you to keep on progressing and help learn and understand the game. Ideally, they come out of this system, at least maybe further down the line when we've developed it further, and have a general understanding of how the game comes together, how it works, and then they can set off on their wild adventures and do whatever they want. That's, that's the core of it. OK, perfect. Thank you. Um, I, there has been a lot of feedback to this, which, which is great. I, I know I've seen a lot of positivity, which is, which is good, um, even from experienced players who, who recognize that it's not easy as a new player always to, to know where you're going straight away after joining the game. Um, but equally, there have been some concerns as well, which is normal, and we always want to listen to you when, when you have concerns. Um, I know in particular the transportation suggestion was, was uh, probably the hottest um, thing that we mentioned. And I'm not that surprised, right? Oh, yeah. No. Like, one thing, one thing f for sure is that everything in there is just an idea, really, right? Just spitballing different things that we could potentially do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Adventure Paths is the one in development right now. Um, and I think that's one that's got the most potential to hopefully make a difference in that area. Um, but at the core of it, we also want your ideas of how we can help improve that early game. One thing that's also important to consider is when we are looking at Reddit and Twitter and wherever social, whichever social channels we want to look at, that those are generally current players as well. And so to get feedback from potential new players or people who've tried out and just not and completely quit, it's much harder to reach those and actually get their feedback on how the early game works. So that takes research and it takes a lot of effort from the research department at Jagex. There's a lot that goes into this, um, but the core of it is we're going to be A-B testing all of this. So when it comes to adventure paths, um, we'll be testing that. Whichever, whatever else we look at, we'll be testing that. And that's to confirm we're actually making a positive difference to the early game. And Really, all of this is trying to contribute to having more players coming into the game and a healthier future for old school. 
If it doesn't work, then we'll be taking it out. That's the core of it. We try to keep these changes out of the way of existing players where possible. Take, for example, one of the simpler things we've done before, like when you create a new account and come off Tutorial Island, you get put in Lumbridge. We put you nearer the Lumbridge guide uh, some months ago. This, I think, is not too much hand-holding or easy scape, but we were able to um, gather data on whether people put nearer the guide tended to run into it and get guidance from it, as opposed to um, people who were put where, back in the courtyard where you previously were. Um, it's the kind of thing where you know, we wouldn't be able to put it to a poll, like, should you be put nearer the guide, yes or no? Because first of the considerations are not something that most existing players are going to be running into on a daily basis, unless you make a lot of alts, in which case, um, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, also, if we found it didn't work out for us, um, we'd want to be able to take it out again without needing another 75% to say that you are okay with us reverting it. So we're trying to keep that kind of thing out of your way as far as possible. Sure, adventure paths are a bit more in the game than, the, um, than exactly where we put you when you come off the island. But um, I hope you understand what we're trying to do or why. And in the case of the transport system, one of the other things touched on in the blog was something we've talked about on these streams before, the possibility that if free-to-play have a harder time getting around towns because they can't train agility and run, f and run there, what if we let them train agility? I mean, it means giving some members content to free-to-play, but they would ultimately be earning the ability to travel around like that, the same way members do, um, only with perhaps a more limited course in the free-to-play area. That got a surprising amount of support on one of these streams before when we straw-polled it. So if you'd rather we went that way rather than adding um, a transport system, um, we can totally th think more about it. I got one suggestion sent in from a player who suggested that we just um, add, do it via canoeing and add a river um, out to through the middle of the free play area so it goes to Falador. <laughs> I think that would be a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> just a huge network of rivers everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I think the players who objected to a pub would find this more concerning. But yeah. I mean, and just before we move on from this point, I think regardless of what we do to try and help teach players about what old school is and get them introduced to the game, old school's old school. That's the game, and that's the game we're always trying to gear players up for. We're not going to change old school itself massively at all. Um, there's no desire to do that at all. Sure. I think perhaps the more suspicious members of our community didn't, like the line, particularly in the blog where we said we want to be able to make these changes quickly um, or take them back if, if necessary, which requires doing them unpolled. And I think that's always a scary idea because it means putting a lot of trust in us that we'll make the right decisions. But yeah. um, if that is going to be the case, then it is on us to uphold our side of our commitment to talk to you guys about these changes um, and make sure we're not stepping on toes of you know, e existing players. So. Our aim is not to force a change into the game that makes you all quit in case that's unclear. <laughs> However, we do find that if we've got to um, run every little tweak to the new player experience, past a 75% survey of existing players who aren't engaging in it, um, that will really hamper our ability to improve the experience for your newer recruits. And growing the community is generally in your interests as well. Um, we hope that we can find a way of doing it that doesn't damage your experience. I really think the adventure paths are not going to um, massively reshape how people experience old school RuneScape. After all, having guides in the newbie area, the tutors standing around Lumbridge, that's been a long established thing for a very long time. Guess what, they're not all that great because um, teaching people how to cast magic through the medium of empty chat boxes just isn't yeah. ideal. I, I mean, paint the whole <laughs> situation like this, right? You've got the tutorial right now. The tutorial hand holds you all the way through. You have an arrow point to everything you need to go and do, and it's linear. Old school is literally the opposite of that, right? You can do it going anywhere you want. There's very little hand-holding. So players don't come out of the tutorial very well prepared. And we need to make a difference that will help new players understand what they're doing and prepare them for that lack of hand-holding experience that, the, that we want old school to actually have later in the game. That's what makes it unique. I did get a suggestion, I think from Senpai Scape on Twitter, um, 
whether we could just take the beginner diary of the Lumbridge area and um, add some hint arrows to it and then use it as the adventure paths. I do like the idea, I mean, it's reusing something we have rather than creating something new, which is usually great. The thing is, we'd like this one to be something existing players don't have to deal with. Like, if you don't yeah. want to do the adventure paths, don't. They're not ex you're not exactly missing out. But if we built it into the diary, you'd suddenly have to do it if you want to ever do the higher tier diaries and get their rewards. So rather than making it an obligatory piece of completion content, um, we'd like to design something custom and not have it stuck on Hattius. <laughs> Somebody's mentioned the suggestion we saw on Reddit as well. That was, I mean, that stemmed from this initial blog and that's, that's really cool to see actually. So this, 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 is, the this is the gossiping, gossiping NPC NPCs, suggestion. Right. Uh -huh. So this is, so you'd had a gossip NPC added to each of the core free to play cities like mm. Farrock, free, Falador, Lumbridge, and they're just, Sat, they've been listening to everything going on around them. So you can talk to them as someone who can tell you about what can you do in this area as a general, as mm -hmm. a general topic. So they can help point out certain tasks, things like that. So I think that's a little bit further down the line. Mm -hmm. Once you sort of understand, I can go to Fallon, I can go to Varrock, and what can I do here? I really like that idea, and I, what I, but I also really like the community actually getting involved and understanding, like, yeah. what can we do to help this problem? Yes. A Postal service is the um, same kind of thought. Yeah. They, you know, a bit like Rune Mysteries, take this package to the dude in Varrock um, and get paid for it. Um, could send people back and forth. Of course, the transport um, situation is not ideal at the moment. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully that answers any questions or concerns you guys had about the, uh, the Adventure Path stuff. Um, we look forward to continuing work with you guys uh, and your suggestions and sort of implementing this in the best way possible. Um, I'm going to move on. Uh, so, Mod G, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you've got some uh, things you'd like to show off, uh, some of the elves-related things. Are you Soat. happy to do that for us? Soat, yeah. yes. Soaty, okay. arty Soat. things. Um, I did it the wrong way, whatever. <laughs> um, Soaty, arty things. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to... Cool. Um, are you going to... Are you going over to the other desk? Or I have a clicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to click. I've right, got a clicker. Back. Excellent. No. Cool. no. Uh, well, take Jeez. it away. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you some arty things. A lot of these things, if you follow me on Twitter, at JagXG, you may have already seen. But if you haven't, I just thought I would like recap what I've been doing recently. So, first of all, I'm going to show you... Lord Cruis, yeah. So you guys have seen Lord Cruis before if you follow me on Twitter. Lord Cruis is um, one of the new house leaders for the Elven City. He's actually half elf. He spent a long time disguised as a tree, so he's sort of half elf, half tree. Um, so this is what he looks like. Some people in the chat are saying hire her. Hire her. <laughs> <laughs> you wish, uh, it's my okay. command. <laughs> um, so this is what he looks like. Um, and then, so Lord Cruis is obviously a brand new model to the game, brand new character, um, but he does exist in RS3. Um, I, he, he, I took some design inspiration from RS3, but overall I kind of reinvented him for old school because the RS3 design didn't really fit. Um, so I changed quite a lot of things, but tried to keep to the sort of ma main core of the character. Um, after that is a character who you guys may have seen before. <laughs> which is mm. Elaned. Um, Elaned obviously hangs around in Letia. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with her. Um, I wanted to... Um, so we're reworking the elves in Letia just to be sort of in keeping with the new elves that we're introducing so there's not too much disparity. Um, I, mean, I hope no one has to say why. <laughs> <laughs> it's the chin. <laughs> Look at the state of... Oh, yes, the chin is incredibly pointy. <laughs> 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 And she's, I think she's almost indecent as well in like, <laughs> certain areas. Um, so I wanted to again keep the sort of main beats of the character, but make and keep her feeling old school. Obviously, that's so important. Um, but this is the design that I came up with. And this, uh, so I'm, sh I'm showing first the original design that I shared on Twitter. 
So this is the original design that I shared on Twitter. Um, a lot of people gave some really, really great feedback and I was really happy um, that a lot of the feedback was that her corset, because I gave her a corset because I didn't want her to be sort of bare midriff, um, was too close to her skin shade. Um, her hair could have been more vol voluminous. The corset didn't really read as a corset. So these are, this is Elanid after the changes. So this is the updated model after taking on everybody's feedback. What do you guys think? You've blunted her chin. I have blunted her chin. <laughs> oh, but she was no. using that as a weapon. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I've, I mean, you can see the chat as well. The, there's an improvement from the second one or the third one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eleanor's chin, which was previously a best in slot stab weapon, has now been nerfed. But mm -hmm. um, I think we're probably going to be all right with that. <laughs> Speaking of um, Eleanor's chin, this was her chat head. <laughs> it looks like someone just squashed the bottom half of her face. <laughs> That's how you make the chin. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like there isn't even any actual 3D difference between the chin and the neck. It just all slides together. Um, but this was Eleanor's yep. chat head. And a lot of you may have seen this because, again, I posted an original version and then I posted the reworked version of the chat head that I made, um, which is this one. Um, I think the chat heads are something that people um, really rely on for their nostalgia. So one of the things that was really important to me was to be able to use the old rig and use all of the old animations. It meant that making, like working with the old mesh was really difficult because it's kind of all over the place, but it was really important because it had to move right, I think, in that old school way and fit with all the other chat heads. So I wasn't gonna do new. Um, animations. Um, and then what else am I showing? Okay, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the next uh -huh. thing that I'm about so to show funny. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, these are Mod Lenny's lovely text lines that he drafted up for me <laughs> to show you. Um, so the next slide is an elf that you guys have not seen yet. Um, so this is an exclusive Okay, so this is Lady Mylia. Um, she is a, another elven house leader that will be available to see in Priftiness. Um, part of her brief is that she sort of hasn't seen the sun for a while, so she's very white, she's very pale. <laughs> she a, she's dead. <laughs> this is what, <laughs> she blends in with her book, the pages for a book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think the book's actually genuinely darker. Um, <laughs> But um, so I, w with all of the house leaders, I really wanted to push the designs. Um, Lady Myla is particularly tiny and petite, um, but I wanted her to still feel quite um, powerful as like a house leader. Um, she's sort of herb lore and like bits and pieces like that. So I gave her the sort of belt to telegraph all of those points. Um, there is a Lady Myla in RS3 for anybody who knows RS3, but you can probably see that I've deviated quite far from that design, um, just because I really wanted to give, keep her quite like fresh and unique and really go with um, the, the sort of brief that I had about this elf. Um, so yeah, that concludes um, Soti Arty Things with G. Oh, excellent. Oh, fantastic segment. <laughs> <laughs> cool. is, this a, is this a new thing? Yeah, Soti Arty Things. Soti Arty Things with G, episode one. <laughs> um, Elves. Cool. So every week, am I am I right in saying, G? Um, you're always well. Actually, I, I know for a fact you post your things on Twitter quite frequently, so you're always open to feedback from players who are interested. Yes. Um, so, or, so I'm going to post Lady Mylia on uh, Twitter immediately after this. Um, Lord. Uh, Cruis is already on Twitter. Is there a chance we're going to get a link in the chat? Uh, there is a link. It's exclamation mark Cruis, uh, which is spelled. C R W Y S. That's the one. Um, and exclamation mark Eluned. Um, so if you want to give G any feedback on either of those models. I would uh, love the feedback. It's, it's so useful. People might think that I don't read it, but I do. And even like the smallest little suggestions like, are really, really useful. Because sometimes, as you saw with the Eleanor at the start, even just the smallest, subtlest changes can make a really big difference to the overall model. So feedback me, boys. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's the thing. And other people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and anyone, anyone who plays our games. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> cool. Um, I'm going to move on to the next part. Uh, well, the final announcement we have. Uh, it's not even an announcement, really. Um, the last thing before we move on to the questions, which is uh, just a brief overview of the update that you can expect tomorrow. Um, so what do we have in there? I, I know there's a lot of farming stuff. It's primarily a farming-themed farming yeah. update. Maz has done a lot of work on the seed vault based on the uh, feedback players um, raised when it came out. So we put those on poll 67 and um, she's uh, just finishing off the search feature last I saw. So um, we got the ability to search the seed vault. Um, she's implemented placeholders like the bank has. So um, when you withdraw a stack of your seed, um, you can have a placeholder. Uh, she's added saplings so that you can store those along with your seed. And um, what's the fourth thing? Elongation. Oh yes, yes. When you're in resizable mode, the seed vault, like the bank, um, gets bigger and fills the screen vertically. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I thought that should help a bit. We've also got a couple of other farming things. Um, your leprechauns, they can now hold a lot more tools. So um, rather than just be one from the standard tools, you can now have 100 rakes or dibbers and secateurs and um, spades, gardening trowels. I um, could so say in this update we're really putting the magic in Magic Leprechaun, because <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> well, they take, what, a thousand buckets of stuff, so um, 100 trowels um, should be a very minor <laughs> problem for these magical creatures. Also, we've come a very long way from when the theme was meant to be that they were stored in the Zanaris shed in Lumbridge Swamp. I don't think we ever really worried about that. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> although it did get uh, redesigned in RS3 with a leprechaun theme and wooden uh, and green woodwork. Mm. Anywho, yeah, you can give your leprechauns more tools, except watering cans. I'm afraid we weren't able to do that one because, you know, different cans may have different quantities of water in. Uh, we can't have all that in there. But your basic tools, your let tools, take them off you. And um, inspecting a farming patch. If you inspect a patch, it currently tells you things like it's growing or it's diseased or it's dead. If it's growing healthily, it will now tell you what's, what progress it's got to. I mean, you could probably tell already by just looking at the model and saying, because you can probably recognise them after all this time. But um, it will now tell you state, you know, three out of eight or... Um, two out of three to show you how much progress it's made for people who haven't quite worked out how to recognise the different models yet. And um, the same for the amount of nature. You bind that to a um, farming patch, you can then use it to inquire remotely what state things got to. Or you could use the geomancy spell, which is, I think, better, but um, the amount of nature should at least be able to do it. While testing that, Modrock ran into an old bug where, um, oh yeah, one of the 12 grapevine, grapevine patches did not work with the of nature, just refused to be bound to that patch. That's being fixed. Yeah. Thanks, Modrock, for finding that one. <laughs> I'm not sure people use it much. <laughs> um, alongside the farming changes, I believe we're doing some rebalancing as well. Um, mm. Following the ZMI nerf that came out, was it a couple of weeks ago now? Um, some players raised other things that uh, have better XP rates than you would expect or were intended originally. Um, so I believe we're making the Arceus Library books untradeable. Uh, so not untradeable, unbankable. Um, so that the method of banking them through inboxes won't give you quite as good rates as it did before. Um, underwater agility has been, I think, nerfed 10% to make it more in line with the original polling. And the third one, I think, not a nerf, so to speak, um, but just a rebalancing of farming contracts. Since we have Mod Tide available, can he holler in to the stream to say, to describe that in uh, more detail? Yeah, absolutely. Um, are we if able to mic? Or if he just comes and leans over your shoulder and talks down your neck. We'll... Um, sure. Oh, yeah. I'll have totally love the footage the of clicker. the other. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't like using the clicker. Uh, well, we welcome Mod Tide to the, uh, to the couch to explain the farming contracts scaling that's uh, coming in the update tomorrow. Right. So the contracts at the current time only really take into account the difficulty of the thing you are planting. But what I've done now is in 
it now uh, takes into account the growth time as well. So now there's a tier system. So tier one would be, for instance, an easy contract that's now short in time length. And tier five would be a long contract as well as a hard seed. And the amount of seeds that you gain each contract has been scaled as well, as well as the types of seeds you'll be getting in the contracts as well. Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> So that's what he didn't, he didn't get the tea. <laughs> Everyone jumped. <laughs> so, back to the farming. <laughs> so, with tier one contracts, you will get a min, well, you will get six seeds, randomly split between the types of seeds you'll get, and with a tier five contract, you will get your full ten seeds, which would be near enough the equivalent of what you would have got with a normal hard contract. And that's how the new contracts will work. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and that about, well, besides that, I know we've got plenty of um, other changes. Uh, if you read the other changes section, hopefully you do have the, uh, the update posts. Um, there's quite a long list of smaller things in there as well. Oh, yes, there's a few um, usability improvements while we're about it. I think the most significant one is about puffer fish underwater. Since we're um, adjusting the XP to be close to the pole rate, which is a bit of a negative for people, we're also um, addressing the um, lack of puffer fish. Why are you pointing that at me? <laughs> <laughs> if I get shot, you don't know why. <clears throat> Anywho, um, so at the moment when there's a lot of players underwater, there may not be enough puffer fish for them to um, get. And sure, they're available in the shop, but um, it's kind of inconvenient. So um, what we're doing is changing the, avail the availability of them to be less dependent on players. We can't have you know individual ones for each player but we we're changing it so there'll be seven sets of puffer fish and which set you see is random based on just a random variable set on you so that if there's you know lots of us in there at the same time we're not all seeing the same set of puffer fish so we're not competing with each other to get the same ones it's not like completely in individual but it's about as um, close as we're going to be able to get for this and i think it will help so it's the end of the Great Puffer Fish Wars. <laughs> well, I'm going to miss that um, drama. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some other drama. Lovely. And I just saw it in the chat. Should be a for that, in fact. I just saw it in the chat, people asking about Theatre of Blood updates. They are tomorrow, the, the ones I was talking about on Twitter, um, and issues brought up from the one a couple of weeks ago. So, <clears throat> two major things. Verzik wondering when someone dies. We tried to fix that a couple of weeks ago. Um, it didn't help. Um, we've now, I now did more work on it, and I think we've now got it. So hopefully tomorrow you should see no more issues with that. Secondly, Zarpus. So we made changes to the first phase. So that was a lot faster because people thought it was boring and quite long. So we made it quicker and a bit more intense, um, but made it also a little bit more difficult to account for that. So, but that had an adverse effect in especially smaller teams, duos, solos, trios, were getting damaged quite extensively when you walked onto the poison. Um, so I've had a look at that and I've changed the numbers around a little bit. And so you should find now that the damage is more what you'd expect from prior to the original update. I understand it always scaled like that, but people didn't know it did because that they, well, they were just on top of it so much they never saw it scaling. It was never really relevant before, no. Okay, I realise we're actually about halfway through the stream already and we haven't gotten to the questions, so I'm going to crack on. Um, our first is from... Ah, actually, also, we saw him earlier, Mod Tide is on the chat. I think I omitted him from the list of mods at the beginning, I apologise for that. Um, the wonderful Mod Tide is on chat for us, so if you have any questions, I think at RuneScape uh, in chat, direct them there, he'll pick them up. Um, and hopefully we'll have a chance to answer some at the end. Uh, so our first question is from UIM Fluffy. And it's actually a, a suggestion, I think. Hopefully we can bring the image up. Um, and they want to know what we think of a world filter suggestion, which uh, they posted on Reddit. Um, I think this looks really nice. I don't know about the feasibility of it. Thankfully, I've yeah, got- Yeah, I like it fine. Thankfully, I've got a dev either side of me who'll be able to tell me <laughs> if this is possible or not. Should be um, fine. Oh, excellent. Menu work is never quick, by the way, but it's, I think, easier than what we did for the um, 
uh, spell book anyway. Okay. Would we, how do we feel about the filters they've chosen there? I think that they are maybe just examples, but uh, I'd maybe have um, filter by region if possible, or... Uh, that, that would be nice. Sense. Yeah. That would be nice. So, we're not, I don't think we're too worried what filters they're looking for. If it's an aspect of the world as shown on that menu, then we can make yeah. a filter for it. Oh, amazing. Okay, so yeah, um, it sounds like we all really like this. It looks like they're, well, you guys like it too in chat, so... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll bear that suggestion in mind. Thank you. Um, so Bronze wants to know if we can get a Barbarian Assault Pet Transmog. Um, at the moment it's the Penance Queen, I believe. There's lots of other <laughs> awful, horrible looking creatures which it could possibly turn yeah, into. The ambulatory stovepipes <laughs> with the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what's, I don't know what's with that, but um, Mod Tim, who developed it, he just come from the Soul's Bane project as well, which also has a whopping great big column creature with looming over you. I, he swears he wasn't telling the artist to keep drawing these things for him. <laughs> but I mean, there must be something about him that caused people to draw <laughs> these The things. thing is, all the creatures in Barbara's are pretty cool, except the queen. The queen's <laughs> awful. <laughs> and that's the one they currently get a pet. People, I think people just call it like the BA cow, because it look, resembles more of a cow than it does anything else. It's a penance runners I really hate. I like the runners. runners. Okay. Imagine a little mini runner behind you. It would look amazing. <laughs> it, it looks, well, kinky. Anyway. <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> I, I like the healers. I think they look great. Um, like, especially with the dangly, yeah, like you say. I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm a fan of them. We, we could add it as a transmog, potentially. Cool. Yes. Um, our next question is from Pancake. And uh, it's funny that this is... Um, Oh, it's come up again, Ash. I think it was your suggestion originally, Kieran. Um, they're asking about dividing the graceful set effect among all of the pieces again. Yeah. Um, are we still keen on that idea? Would we like to, you know, are we going to poll it anytime soon? Um, I like that idea. I'm, I'm like still that. personally keen on that idea. Sure, stick so in the, um, put it in the next list of future polls. Sure. Uh, maybe even the next one. I don't want to promise anything, but we can. there's no reason we can't. It's going to be a while it. before the next one, sadly. Well. Not that sadly, we've um, just written a PvP blog and we'd like to develop the stuff off of it um, before we pull this kind of, any more of this kind of thing, but it should be good. Cool. Um, the same player also asks a similar, similarly themed question, which is how do we feel about Agile armor as it existed in RuneScape 2? I, with Graceful, I don't think really, it really has much purpose, so to I be think honest. Their the point is um, because it has a much greater weight reduction than graceful. In yeah. some cases, it is better than the run restoration effect. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Agile Armor was an armor that had a, well, really good weight reduction. Yeah, the thing is, as far as I understand, as long as you're below zero yeah. weight, it makes zero difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is true. And if you're wearing full graceful, you're below zero weight, generally. Yeah, I think graceful gives something like 25, point. which is gonna be most yeah. things. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks pretty cool, but <laughs> that's all it has to, to offer, I think, for us. Unless we give it, a, unless we made it a better, stronger, graceful, or something like that. But that's More another graceful. idea. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's weird that weights for items in in RuneScript, they they've got granularity down to grams. I don't know why that was ever deemed necessary, because you can't tell the difference between... <laughs> you can specify the weights by different units. You, it all, our compiler also respects grams, kilograms, ounces and pounds. This is quite remarkable, I think. But yeah, the granularity goes down to the gram. We don't use it that much. Do we have any items that weigh a gram? That's Probably really, really testing, <laughs> testing knowledge at this point. The things you'd if, it, if there is, it might be pieces of paper, for example, like mm. parchment scraps of whatever. Um, but stackable items are the ones you'd look to. They have zero weight because um, when Andrew wrote the engine in the first place, he um, figured that you didn't want to have a stack of two billion items with a tiny weight that added up <laughs> to tons. <laughs> you know, for that player with all the needles. <laughs> if you did have. Uh, a stackable item with a weight, would it get to a point where just clicking on one step or running for like two steps would just drain your energy in one, one hit? I'm pretty sure the <laughs> um, formula stopped calculating at some point. Okay. Start, like, <laughs> I think it would overflow the thing calculating your weight. That's probably a max, yeah. Mm. 
Uh, I'll move on to our next question from Lordy. They want to know if demonic gorillas can be changed um, to no longer ignore the second hit of weapons like the DDS or the Crystal Halberd when you trigger the prayer change. So for, for context, imagine you're uh, attacking your demon, uh, demonic gorilla with a DDS. It's not praying melee. You use your special attack. The first hit does enough damage to make it switch to melee. It will then not take the damage of the second hit. Um, this player would like it to because you get the XP um, and it, it, you know, they think it should register. How do we feel about this one? Is it a similar scenario to the Abyssal Sire? Uh, not in that kind of league. The Sire's got to do a fairly complicated transition that involves going through a non-combat phase. This one doesn't. That said, the player's argument is, I got the XP, so I want to do the damage. We could just fix it so you don't get the XP. I think, <laughs> I think also the two hit splats will also appear, um, which makes it maybe feel a little bit odd. But yeah. the second one hits us zero, or does it say damage? Uh, so it will, it will show the damage, but it won't remove it off the health of the demonic gorilla. Yeah, I'm guessing that by the time it's um, executed that, it's changed yeah. form and it's respecting something new. I imagine we could find a way of doing that, possibly with that engine feature that's due quite soon. Yep. That would change the landscape a bit. Oh, it? yeah. Okay, so maybe. Um, our next player, uh, Akras, wants to know if harvesting herbs from the herbivore hurts it or if it's more like a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> ask you the real questions. <laughs> Your one chance to ask us questions every week, and this is what we've been at. <laughs> it makes sense if it was more like a haircut, because her <laughs> <laughs> to answer the guy's question, it would make sense if it was more like a haircut because herbs don't have feelings. Straw poll. Oh, that's, that's mean. <laughs> Some herbs have feelings. Look, we need a straw poll for this, I think. Okay. It's the only way right, to really the outcome, decide. The outcome of this you straw poll. This, uh, this will define the cannon, the, the cannon yeah. <laughs> Does that mean if you're in no combat pure, you shouldn't, um, well, you shouldn't pluck it because it's a bit too much like damaging it? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it uh, looks like Mod Tide's going to set up that straw poll for us. In the meantime, um, Fraff, that's what I'm going with, uh, has a question. Oh, we looked at this one before the stream and you said it's not necessarily a good question or one you're oh, able okay. to answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to misrepresent what Mod G said. Say the question, um, I'll have a go. So it was, how are triangles on model surfaces drawn? Um, from certain camera angles or during certain animations, gaps are created between them. Uh, what causes this? Is this an overlapping issue? Okay, so I think I think what they're trying to ask is basically potentially the fundamentals of modeling. Um, it's, it's for games, you model in tri, so literally just triangles. They, that's the face, and then you have three points. Um, a lot of our problems, sort of when you see like triangles, come with like clipping. If one color of surface goes through another, you'll usually see that as like a triangle or some kind of deformed shape. Um, a lot um, when you see gaps through models, that's probably because two of like the verts that are meant to be connected are maybe just a tiny bit apart, and then through the animation they're moving away from each other. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. In old school, we use the faces, so the literally the triangles, to do all of the texturing, and it's not even really texturing. We just colour the faces, um, so that's what what makes our models look quite different to games that have full textures like RS3, for example. Um, so that's quite a unique feature, I think. Not, like, not many games are, s are started with polyface texturing, are still going with polyface texturing. Um, I think that's an, a good enough answer to that oh, question. There was a rather amusing example of it back in the old days. Would have been like 2005-ish. Um, the Roving Elves quest just come out with Iselwyn and Delaned, and um, a player um, looked really closely at their blown up screenshot and complained that, um, well, what, however he described it, what he'd identified is that there was a triangle that didn't quite match the ones around it and it was therefore sticking up a bit and it was right at the end of Eleanor's chest. <laughs> and um, the fact that her description said the prettiest elf I've ever seen, wow, uh, was <laughs> not helping this matter. The player felt this was a bit too adult. So um, I don't recall whether it was ever fixed at the at the time or when it was fixed, but um, it's not just her chin that's getting sorted in this update of yours. <laughs> All right, that's good then, inadvertently solving issues. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I'm going to move on to our next question from Zolti Pretzel. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, I thought this was a really good question. So they ask uh, which part of developing new content takes the longest, um, for example, out of design, art, coding, QA, um, or is it something else? It depends on the project, doesn't it, really? I mean, I think in the example of Song of the Elves, it's a very graphics heavy project, right? Oh, yeah. Like, there are so many big environments for that. There are a ton of new characters. Yeah. And so, I mean, what is it? Priftiness? There's yeah. environments for the quest. How many well, characters have you done now? I can't even count. So we've done the whole, the whole of Priftinus, sort of reworked Letia, and those elves that are sort of just roaming around should be um, able to be procedural. So the sort of you've got like out of a kit that you make, you've got like infinite um, combinations. It's like um, Lego pieces. Yeah, like yeah, Lego yeah. pieces, and then just like a bunch of house leaders. Uh, yeah, the new rebels. Yeah, loads. Like to, I think to give some perspective, when, when did you start on Song of the Elves? January. January. And January the 1st. We're not at launch yet. <laughs> that shows you how, how much time's gone into this. Um, but design, I mean, design sort of happens throughout, right? Like, I think with Song of the Elves, Ed put the concept together for like what the story and the quest is and follows up by thriftiness. Mm. Um, I bet he did a lot of the thinking outside of ours as well. Yeah. I think with stories, it's really difficult to actually sit down and say, right, I'm going to spend this week writing a story. Mm. I mean, mm. anyone who's in a game of thrones knows that book hasn't come out for a, <laughs> how, how long. So <laughs> writing stories is difficult. I mean, it's not, it's not the skill of game of thrones, but, <laughs> but you know, uh, so that's difficult. And generally, when we come to design the actual features of an update, like, I think what we've done recently, we've done it with Kepler's Lowlands and Song of the Elves, is we basically put some time aside, dedicated to come up with ideas for, for the reward content. Um, so you guys went out, went and did like an offsite, right? Yeah, we did an offsite just for that, yeah, and had a massive, massive list of ideas and yeah. going through them all and mm. voting. <laughs> I think, like you say, Kieran, it does depend on the content though heavily so there may be for example some things where we're not using a lot of new models or even new mechanics but it might affect lots of different aspects of the game that exists already which will mean the QA team have to really thoroughly vet yep. all the different permutations and things that might happen um, so that's the example of it going the other way. I, I, I think an example of something that is heavy content low on QA even this mm -hmm. an interface is a really good example mm -hmm. Like, they take so long to actually put together, but when it comes to it, to the, to the actual player, there's four buttons. <laughs> and they have very simple behavior. Yeah. But actually making that happen behind the scenes, you're making a button pop in, pop out, a hover over effect when you go over it, applying a sound when you click on it, and maybe you're hiding and showing different parts of the interface. There's so much to actually write, and it's so manually scripted. Um, but for a QA, obviously, there's four buttons, and you're just making yeah. sure that it hovers over. Yeah, that took an hour <laughs> to necessarily write, right? Sure. In the case of um, when Resizable Mode came out, we um, had to handle the idea there were multiple game frames now. So that also meant taking the code for the existing one and rewriting it in a way that could apply to lots of different game frames without needing lots of checks every time we refer to an interface component to see which game frame you were on. And, um, Taking the existing code for fixed mode game frame and turning it into that was a surprisingly big job, at the end of which, ideally, you wouldn't actually notice we'd done a darn thing. Um, took a while, but it mostly seems to have worked, and it meant that we can now handle the, well, the three game frames we had at that time and the additional one we got for mobile since then. Uh, oh, the results of that straw poll we did are in. So um, we asked you guys, when harvesting, don't forget, this is for canon lore. Um, when harvesting a herbivore, is it more like a haircut or killing it? 39% um, of you voted that it's being killed, and 61% say that it's having a trim. So there we go. That's, that's uh, I mean, settled, I suppose. I think the, the killer argument is when you get one as a pet, you can't have just kill it, can you? Mm. The way um, Tide spelt Herbivore there um, suggests that it, he didn't find the question interesting. Um, you spelt it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a kind of pig B O A R for the pig thing, whereas B O R E suggests it just wasn't a very interesting question. Because <laughs> <laughs> perhaps it wasn't. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Our next question is from a player called Methanol, 
Um, they want to know if we can re-poll the defence requirement on blessed dehyde chaps and van braces. Um, I remember this question, it was one of the things, one of the later things that we polled shortly before hiding poll results. Um, and I must admit, part of me does want to re-poll this one, um, because I think it wasn't fully explained. Um, I think a lot of players missed the fact that uh, equivalents, well, Black Dehyde only requires one defense for the chaps and van braces, and it wouldn't be any different for Blessed Dehyde. In fact, we'd be making things more consistent with this change. It's just a plus one prayer bonus. Um, so, if no one else objects, I'd kind of personally really like to re-poll that one, especially given we're now hiding poll results to get possibly a more accurate result on the change. I'm genuinely curious to see what difference that makes. It might be a nice um, use case as well for seeing how the same question behaves before and after the, uh, the hidden poll results. Uh, Tida suggested we put a prayer requirement on it instead. Um, sure, maybe we can look at that as well. Um, alrighty, so ESP asks if the official client will ever get a GPU rendering update, um, one that we teased a while back, I think it's something like a year ago it was talked about. Um, does anyone know the situation there? Of all the things that the um, engine team can be working on, I'm afraid that is not the one they're currently on. Um, what they're currently doing is more focused on, well, rewriting the language so that it can handle data types relating to um, clans so that we can have more persistent groups than we currently can, which would allow us to do group Iron Man as well. So I'm afraid, no, it's not a graphics update. Okay. Um, Bliske has a suggestion, which is... Can Godsword shards be changed to drop in order, similarly to the bludgeon and totem pieces? Um, I think this is an Iron Man who's gone <laughs> dry of one piece for a long time. It's the, I've got 24 loop halves, three tooth, <laughs> that problem. But I don't really want to change something that's been that way for a long time, especially sure. God Wars, something that's iconic. Yeah, okay. Probably, yeah. Is that something we often even do when the items are tradable? When they're tradable, we've never had reason to, right? Because a normal player, at least we didn't have Iron Man I'm going sorry, you're God abnormal. Wars. <laughs> <laughs> a normal account. <laughs> we'll, we'll just go sell the one they don't want and buy the one they do want, right? So. Okay. So probably not looking to change that one. I'm, I'm not keen. Um, Azor wants to know, what is the thought process when, when deciding whether an NPC will be aggressive or not? Um, and... There's also a second part to the question, which is uh, same thing, but for multi and non-multi areas. Um, how do we how do we decide? When it comes to aggressive creatures, I don't think we've even thought about it that much recently. Oh, it's been it's quite rare that we're making a new creature that isn't designed for a very specific purpose. Yeah, like we're making a dungeon of monsters for training on. We'll probably make them aggressive because that tends to be what you need in yep. a dungeon of training monsters. You make a boss it tends to be aggressive. Give will take the mimic. On the other hand, you're putting down scenery NPCs, um, like generic men and women all over um, a town, probably wouldn't do that. But if you're making like a mugger, then for thematic reasons it makes sense that it's going to be aggressive. Yep. And if you're going out of the built-up areas and into the wild, not the wilderness, but a more wild area, like the woods between Lumbridge and Drainer, it makes sense that the bear would be an aggressive creature there. Most of the time, like if we just go for the default behavior, right? If it's if 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 you can attack it, generally it'll have the whole. You got to be twice the combat level thing for it not to be aggressive, right? That's pretty much universally most creatures we've ever added to our dungeons and stuff follow that rule. We seldom make new kinds of creature for just generic wandering around the scenery. Like we put down some hill giants in the west of Karend. They're probably the same hill giants put down anywhere else. The catacombs is an example where we made new kinds of creature, but there it made sense for things to be aggressive because it's a slayer dungeon. Yes, it's two times plus one, you dang pedants. <laughs> <laughs> There's an interesting thing like in when you're hanging out in Letia in the new Soat quest, um, you're sort of like chatting to the elves, helping them all out, and then you can slaughter their warriors. Mm -hmm. So that feels a bit like... <laughs> It's like, oh, I'm chatting to you guys, having you guys. I know it's sort of, you, you would always be able to like kill the rebel warriors, okay. um, but it's just a quite jarring. <laughs> I think there's somewhere in the game where um, one can talk about 
is it a problem that if I kill all your um, guards? So, oh, the training is good for them, says the <laughs> king or their leader or whatever it is. I forget which one it is. At least King Lafus has a training ground with um, dummies in rather than encouraging people to kill his own guards. So people steal from those. <laughs> Uh, our next question is from Tommy, and it's directed for G. Um, and they want to know which <coughs> game is your favourite to design, for example, out of environment, NPCs, items, etc. Oh, NPCs are my favourite to design. Uh, I haven't actually... Have I designed a boss yet? I haven't actually designed a boss yet, but that would definitely be... I reckon I'd enjoy that a lot. Um, my favourite thing that I've designed so far is probably still Kona. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed designing her. Um, there's a couple of elves that still haven't come out yet, which I'm really happy with. <laughs> but you will see those in good time. Are we'll you, do a boss at some point. At some point. Are you interested at all in doing sort of scenery or environment, or are you more keen on models like NPCs, bosses, that kind of thing? So um, I still sort of haven't had my full environment training yet. Um, I think there's a chance that I might be whipping up an environment, um, sort of r running up towards the end mm -hmm. of SOAT. As we are now all calling I'm, it. I'm so glad. No, you are. You are. <laughs> You're the only person who this call I'd do is G. <laughs> it just sounds so ridiculous. I'm just going to keep saying it. Um, but uh, so my my sort of forte, I suppose, is characters. I love designing characters. I'm really interested in characters. Um, but I will not let you down on environments. Oh. Good. So if you were making a boss, um, is there any particular kind of species you'd like to work with? Because Mod Ghost has previously found it very frustrating dealing with things like, well, the Abyssal Sire that has so many legs. Mm. Every boss he's ever <laughs> done has so many legs. He said at the time of the Sire that he wasn't going to do anything with that many legs ever again, and then he made um, Versa. The, the spiders. <laughs> we did the Hydra with many heads, which is also just as complicated. And then there's the Mimic with what the heck that is. <laughs> I want to make... A snail. <laughs> a snail There's boss. many nothings. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't really have my... Uh, I, I've spoken before that there was a character that I designed to be a boss for, for my art test to get here, mm. and I still have that character on the back burner in my brain sort of at okay. all times because I, I was quite pleased with that character. She got me here, so um, <laughs> maybe if I can... Slip her in somewhere. What, what, I'd be very happy. Is she a certain type of creature? Yeah, she is a. Oh, should I even say? I don't know. <laughs> it's your secret. Oh yeah, it's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, d I actually designed sort of um, a fiery harpy, um, and I was uh, maybe oh, maybe I one think. day. No, I just need to think of what mechanics we can add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be a thing. Things that fly around, you could do something interesting with. Yeah, I think you've done one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I suppose Mod Ghost might have been looking back um, to the easier days of Zora with no legs. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, so our last question before I move on to the chat questions comes from Byram. And they ask if the champion's cape can see a stat boost um, to make it worth wearing during combat. Um, currently, it's only a cosmetic cape, but requires a lot of effort to attain. Um, how do we feel about this? I'm fine with it just being a cosmetic cape. That's the point of it. Okay. As soon as you make something useful, people will want to get it, even though it's never meant to be. I don't yeah. want people to want it that much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because okay. I don't want people to go and spend hours doing 5,000 kill drop rate things. Yeah. Mm. But like how many creatures? 11, 12? Yeah, yeah. Like I've done quite a few of them, my main. <laughs> it is literally just sitting there with a the cannon for a few hours, <laughs> hoping for the best, and that's really it. Okay. Do we feel the same way about the, um, the raids cosmetic capes? It's the same thing, right? They're, they're, I mean, the capes are there to show off that you're someone who's just been dedicated to doing raids, and mm -hmm. you've done an insane number of raids, then yeah, it's cool. That, that's all it's for. But I and guess the point is, if because they don't compare to the fire cape or the infernal cape, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're not people aren't wearing them to show off those achievements. Um, what if, and maybe this will get destroyed in chat? I expect it to. But what if you could use the fire cape or the infernal cape on your cosmetic cape to, to give it the equivalent stats? If you're going to have the stats on the thing, I'd like that to be reflected in how it looks, rather than you see somebody coming with this cape, you don't know whether they're wearing combat gear or not. 
I the way wouldn't it allow it in PvP, for sure. The way it works quite well is the, the max kits, right? Because we actually have a scope to colour the cape appropriately and mm. tie in the fire cape like and the infernal cape smoothing texture onto it. Mm. So they work. And I feel like trying to expand that to basically any other reward cape that's cosmetic would mm -hmm. be open a massive jar of worms. Okay, because we, it's not something we can just say, you're right, you've used your fire cape on it, have the fire cape stats. That's a lot, it's a lot of work as well without adding the complication of whether people even want it. Hmm. Sure, it is potentially a slippery slope as well, I think. Um, okay, that's fair enough. Uh, so I'll move on to the chat questions. I appreciate we're right at the end of the stream. Um, Astronauts wants to know what's going to happen to their Nightmare Zone points if warding passes. Um, they want to know if they've wasted their time imbuing all of their rings and Slayer Helms. Um, yeah, so that's their question. Currently a lot of work's been done to work through all of the feedback from the last warding design. That is being act like that's been actively worked on for the last few weeks. There's a lot of it. And there's a lot of it. We know there was heavy feedback. Nightmare Zone is one part of it. We know it was controversial to doing anything with the rings. If we do come to a point, I think the current the current expectation is <coughs> anything Nightmare Zone changing with the rings was a separate full question. So you'd yeah. have full control over that. Fair. I know that the approach with uh, Song of the Elves initially was, um, well, we, we made it so that uh, the crystal imbues that we wanted to move to Priftinus, um, we wouldn't punish anyone who had already achieved them um, and just have it as a thing going forward. Uh, but I believe in the revised version, um, that design has changed now anyway. So if you're interested in what that looks like, exclamation mark SOTE, S-O-T-E, will take you straight to that poll blog. Um, and you can, you can read it there. <laughs> I'll move on to our next uh, chat question um, from Biozatic. They want to know if we would consider repairing your cannon, um, giving you some experience, just a little bit. That would make sense. It would make sense, but why? That's what they say. <laughs> What experience? Crafting? Would it be smithing? smithing construction? Maybe? Yeah, that's it's, awesome. so There's two cases here, right? Well, three. Right now, it does nothing. Mm -hmm. There's a case where you give too much XP, and everyone training any skill just has a cannon near them waiting for it needing repair. Mm -hmm. So they train fletching, the cannon's just outside the bank, and they're waiting to go over and get that extra XP. Mm -hmm. Or it's so negligible, what was the point of adding it? Yeah, so I think it raises an interesting question about token XP, because there are other instances in the game where we have token XP. Yeah. So I suppose you'd argue, you'd question what is the purpose of that then? I, sh I mean, don't get me wrong, it's there to just say you've used that skill to do it, mm -hmm. really. Um, if somebody's got a requirement especially. Right, sure. It kind of has no requirements, so feasibly, yes, it, you could argue it uses smithing. And also, there's no harm in adding one XP drop either, but... Is it worth us going to that file and changing it right now? Um, no. To this player, in that case. Well, perhaps it was, but um, I'm sure we could find something else to be doing. Sure. Um, uh, All mate Greg wants to know if uh, a Barrow's pet is on the horizon at all. Could it be something that can be put into the game in future? Uh, a Barrow's pet? I've always wanted to do it. I like it, although I think we might save that one free if Barrow's activity is dropping and we need to add a buff to bring people back to it rather than just doing it for the sheer cosmetic joy. What would this look like? A mini yeah. version of the brothers that you can transform <laughs> between them? I mean, who or knows? Various suggestions have come up, including a walking chest, <laughs> um, which <laughs> might infringe Terry Pratchett's <laughs> copyrights. But um, the, a little walking pink dude seems like the approach I'd, I'd prefer. The thing is, it's been one that it seems to always be more controversial adding a Barrow's pet. And I think that mm. becomes because the idea of a lot more people doing Barrow's means a lot more runes coming into the game. Mm -hmm. Sure. Which is a concern, mm -hmm. to be honest. And it becomes less of a money making method because everyone's doing it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Or just a wheelbarrow, a little trundling barrow. <laughs> I like that one. That's probably my the Barrow's Barrow. <laughs> uh, Matthew McConaughey wants to know if we can show ping um, in the next to the worlds in the world switcher. Is that something that's feasible? The um, engine team wasn't able to offer it back when old school was newer. Could be that if they're able to give us, uh, well, they're giving us a lot more support than they were in those days. That's how we have a mobile version, for example. Um, hopefully this is something they can offer in future as well. 
Also, the um, world switcher, the one on the login screen, you know, it's not a very nice user experience, like having to hover over everything to see the tooltips, you can't see the themes otherwise. Um, they're doing some work to um, let us as content developers edit the login screen in future, rather than anything involving the login screen having to be more engine work, because, you know, engine work, hard to get. If they can do a bigger job now that lets us edit it ourselves without going to them for every change, that would be quite helpful in future. And it means we'd be able to have not just a more usable interface than the current kind of patchwork thing with the tooltips, but we could add things like a favourites, something to store your favourites. Um, I think that'd be quite helpful, especially as the one that your um, client loads may not be the one you want it to be. Okay, well, thank you very much for that, Ash. Uh, I realise that brings oh, sorry, us... Sorry, I went on a bit. Brings that, that brings us just a little bit over time, so I'm going to wrap things up here. Um, quick reminder of some of the announcements. Uh, exclamation mark SOTE is going to bring you to the revised version of the Song of the Elves poll blog. Um, we'd like to put that live this week, possibly tomorrow. Um, the PvP blog, uh, you can hear more about that, hopefully on the next stream when we have Mod Rock. Um, Mod G, if you missed it, talked about the Song of the Elves elf models. Um, if you want to give feedback on those, uh, exclamation mark Eluned or exclamation mark Cruis. Um, we'll take you straight to the tweets where you can give a feedback. Um, and keep an eye out for, for tomorrow's update where we'll be bringing seed, of, seed vault improvements alongside other farming improvements. Um, and that just about does it. So I'm going to thank everyone for joining me here on the couch as well as Mob Tide who's been hanging out in the chat with you guys. Um, You're very welcome. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.